muzzle tub to the both of you. Well, I don't know what Mazel Tov means, but it doesn't sound good. Mazel Tov indeed, Nick. Anyways, welcome back, True Believers, Spectacular Spy fans, and all you vicious Venom fans out there to another really interesting video. And of course, if you've been keeping up with all the kind of recent news that's been happening recently with Into the Spider-Verse and the Venom movie, you will understand why I just played that clip of New Girl. So if you recall about a week ago, we actually got a really awesome trailer for Venom at CinemaCon. And this is because Sony had a really big exclusive presentation on the opening night of CinemaCon for all their upcoming movies, including Venom and Into the Spider-Verse. And along with the Venom trailer that was shown off at CinemaCon, Con that was later released online, we actually got an exclusive Into the Spider-Verse trailer that was only shown at CinemaCon and we haven't seen what it is like yet. However, there is an awesome post from comicbook.com that fully breaks down all the footage and details that happen at CinemaCon for Into the Spider-Verse. But first, I want to talk about the really interesting aspect about Venom from the Venom movie. So of course, in the new Venom trailer, we actually got to see what Venom looks like in the movie and he looks absolutely spectacular. However, the one thing that we don't know for sure about the Venom movie is how Venom's design is going to look overall in the film with his full appearance. And of course, what I'm talking about is whether or not we are going to see the white spider logo on Venom in the movie. And sadly, given what I'm about to show you, it looks like the answer to that is going to be no. Now, of course, as you should know, since this Venom movie is said to be in its own universe that does not include Spider-Man, there are a lot of people that are wondering whether or not we're going to see the white spider logo on the actual Venom suit. And there's actually rumors going around that I brought up in a couple of other videos saying that instead of a white spider logo, they could actually have a really interesting white V as the logo itself. But given these pictures, it looks like Sony is not going to go with either of those options. So Eric Davis is actually the managing editor for Fandango and he was actually able to attend CinemaCon in the first place. And when he was able to attend the Sony party that was happening at CinemaCon, he actually discovered something really interesting. And of course on this tweet he says Venom ice sculpture on display at the Sony party here at CinemaCon. And clearly this is an ice sculpture for the Venom design for Tom Hardy's Venom movie. And overall I think Venom looks absolutely awesome. And here are a couple of other pictures to show off what Venom looks like as well. So given this design for the ice sculpture of the Venom movie, it's I really love how big the eyes are going to get and just how huge Venom looks overall. So that was the one problem that I did have with the Venom suit itself is that the eyes, in my opinion, were a bit too small. However, it's really assuring to know that the Venom suit is going to have bigger eyes during the movie. And of course, just seeing how huge and bulky Venom is along with the tendrils shooting out of his body look extremely menacing. And I just can't wait to see how it's going to be played off in the movie itself. And of course, the main thing that we see in this ice sculpture is the chest of Venom and seeing that there is no white spider there at all. And what it looks like Sony is going to be doing is that instead of a white spider or a white V, they're going to have instead white veins going all throughout the Venom suit, which I think actually looks kind of cool. And given how this Venom universe is not connected in the MCU, I was already expecting there to not be a white spider symbol, but I do like these little touches of the white veins going on the symbiote suit itself. And just seeing how Venom looked like in the recent trailer, along with looking at this ice sculpture, I can definitely tell that this Venom in the Venom movie is going to be absolutely mind-blowing. And I just can't wait to see him hopefully fight Carnage in the main film. So now with all that Venom news out of the way, we are going to move on to the big chunk of the video is of course about Into the Spider-Verse. And as I said before, comicbook.com actually posted a really well thought out detailed analysis of everything that was shown off for the movie at CinemaCon. Now the article states, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse spins its web, amazes at CinemaCon. In your universe, there's only one Spider-Man, but there's another universe. It looks and sounds like yours, but it's not. My name is Miles Morales. In my world, more than one wears the mask. That's the premise for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the first ever big screen animated movie starring Spider-Man, more accurately, Spider-Man. Sony Pictures showed off the upcoming Sony Pictures Animation production at CinemaCon in Las Vegas, presenting a mix of exclusive but incomplete footage from the CG animated Spidey tale and big screen debut of Afro-Latino Miles Morales. Tom Rothman, chairman, Sony Pictures Entertainment Motion Picture Group, dubbed the 8 to 80 PG event film Sony's bright and shining Christmas present for 2018. Following the all-ages Dwayne Johnson-led blockbuster hit Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, arriving just before Santa last year. This December, Sony delivers a brand new take on the most iconic character of them all, Rothman said, exalting the newest animated production from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and the Lego movie duo Phil Lord and Christopher Miller as a breakthrough in animation. It's a new visual and story universe where one of the most popular modern Spider-Man comic heroes, Miles Morales, can come to life at last. Fans have clamored for this young hero of color to have his own film and these two guys figured out how to do it. Slide 1, the dynamic duo. Enter and enthuse Lord and Miller, the dynamic duo serving as producers alongside Avi Arad, Amy Pascal, and Christina Steinberg. 
Spielberg. We're so excited about this movie. We're so proud of it. We're thrilled to help bring the story of Miles Morales to the screen. He continued, his story is a sensation in the comics. We loved it there and we were so inspired to try to find a way to tell his story visually that would be commensurate with that. It's a totally revolutionary style of animation as Tom was talking about. And it was too big of an opportunity for us to pass up. Miller, who crafted the story of Spider-Verse in partnership with longtime collaborator Lord and Gravity Falls creator Alex Hirsch, opened up about the reimagined Spider-Man, who Miller called a really unique character. It's his Brooklyn upbringing. It's his culture. He's half Puerto Rican, half African American. He's a product of a happy and alive family. He's 13 years old. All of that tells the kind of hero he's going to become, and we're going to get to experience the Spider-Man legend through this new and exciting lens. To bring Miles to life, we worked with an actor that we've known for a little while and have been dying to work with, who gave a performance that was so rich and so genuine that Miles became everything that we have envisioned and much, much more. Slide 2, Spider-More. Lord then introduced the incredibly talented and outrageously charming and clearly excited Shamik Moore, whose immediate buoyant playfulness plainly embodied the youthful Spidey from creators Brian Michael Bendis and Sarah Pacelli's comic books. I'm sure I'm not the only kid who imagined himself being Spider-Man, Moore said. I mean, Spider-Man is the most beloved superhero of all time. In fact, this is a true story actually, five years ago in my journal I did write, I am Miles Morales, I am Spider-Man, and now I get to play him. It's literally like Christmas for me. And as Stan Lee said when he first created Spider-Man, he added, it's really true that anyone can wear the mask. Slide 3, the best looking Spider-Man movie. The sizzle reel, a mix of near finish and storyboard like animation, dazzled. Even in its rough state, it can already be described as the most comic book looking movie ever made. This is a colorful living comic book, each of its lively and dynamic panels popping off the screen. The animation is distinctly Sony Pictures Animation's in-house expression but with a Sarah Pacelli inspired flavor. Its style and characters are loose and exaggerated, adding to the fluidity expected of a relaxed and flexible Spider-Man. Fast cut footage showed Miles in a form-fitting and swanky red and black Spidey costume of his own, swinging, flinging, dropping, and soaring in a dizzying dance above a vibrant and lived-in New York City with neon-lit backdrops conjuring imagery akin to that of a more colorful Blade Runner. Into the Spider-Verse promises to be a technical and design marvel, and another fine addition to Spidey's web of films. Slide 4, The Death and Return of Spider-Man. In the footage, electronic billboards in Times Square report grave news. Spider-Man has been found dead at the age of 26. A lanky Miles in a makeshift red and blue costume meant to honor the fallen web-slinger approaches Peter Parker's grave. I'm sorry, Mr. Parker, he says. Then, from behind, Jake Johnson's voice. Hey, kid. What? Miles exclaims. That's impossible. A pair of NYPD cops draw on the teen in his make-do get-up that's more baggy hoodie than superhero uniform. Put him up, son. The teen is scared off. A disembodied voice likely that of Leif Schreiber warns ominously, you'll pay for that, Spider-Man. So I think it's a great choice that Jake Johnson is confirmed to be the voice of Peter Parker in Into the Spider-Verse. So before, there were rumors stating that it was going to be Jim Halpert from The Office, aka John Krasinski, that was going to voice Peter, but I think Jake Johnson is actually a really good choice. And clearly, as you saw from the beginning clip, I really think he can bring a really humorous and upbeat attitude as Peter Parker in this movie. And I can't wait to see his full performance in the film. So next up, slide 5, Spider-Man. Later, a disheveled and frumpy Peter Parker in an equally rumpled and sloppy Spider-Man costume is webbed up in Miles' bedroom. This is cute, Peter says, unimpressed. He doesn't budge. Then, catching on, okay, now it's less cute. A suspicious Miles, mouth running a mile a minute, interrogates him. Why aren't you dead? Why is your hair different? Why are you older? The camera focuses on Peter's soft, pudgy body. Why is your body a different shape? Miles asks. Pretty sure you just call me fat. A rapid fire back and forth. Are you a ghost? No. Are you a zombie? Stop it. Am I a zombie? You're not even close. I know exactly what's going on. This is amazing, Miles exclaims. You're going to teach me to be Spider-Man. At a diner, Peter pigs out, a warm smile across his permanent 5 o'clock shadow. Mmm, I love this burger. So delicious. This Peter Parker isn't at all what Miles expected. Neither do we. I think you're gonna be a bad teacher, he quips. And I just love the back and forth dialogue exchange that's going on in this movie, and that's definitely reminiscent of the comics, and I just can't wait to see how it's gonna play out with Shamik Moore and Jake Johnson's voice acting. So I think this is the most interesting out of all this post is about Slide 6, Ultimate Team Up. We were shown glimpses of the Green Goblin battling a grown-up Spider-Man in the sewers deep below the city. Spidey's arch foe looked ultimate in spirit, but was sprawling and fully functional wings, giving him a look more like that of a monstrous dragon. We caught glimpses of an ultimate inspired kingpin, more masked than man, an adult Spider-Man facing off with a modern prowler. Peter here is the cool older slacker uncle, the schlubby Obi-Wan to Miles' Luke Skywalker. Look Miles, what makes you different, Peter tells him, that's what makes you Spider-Man. We meet Miles' father, Jefferson, voice of Brian T. Henry, a police officer and a mountain of a man, a big teddy bear. I see this spark in you, it's amazing, he says lovingly. Whatever you choose to do, you'll be great. Later, the Spider-Men take to the skies. Time to swing, just like I taught you, a suited up Spider-Man. 
Fireman says. When did you teach me that? Miles asks. I didn't. It was a little joke. For team building. The tone is lighthearted and earnest. Slide 7. Spider Dad. Miles and Jefferson in his squad car. I love you, Miles, Dad says. I know, Dad. Miles answers getting out. Then, the whoop of his police siren. Over speaker. You gotta say I love you back. And embarrassed Miles. Another quick back and forth. Dad, are you serious? He is. I wanna hear it. You wanna hear me say it. Dad pushes. I love you, Dad. You're driving me off at school. I love you, Dad. Look at this place. Dad, I love you. Miles is defeated. Dad, I love you. That's a copy. End of teaser. Slide 8. A whole new world. Into the Spider-Verse with its wide anamorphic canvas and fresh bold animation is a stunner. You can see how dazzling the shots are and understand why the film is dated Christmas worldwide, said Rothman, because it truly is for everyone, young, old, and in between. The trailer featured more Peter Parker than December's teaser led on, but make no mistake, this is very clearly and very obviously a Miles Morales movie. At the heart of any good Spider-Man tale is an ordinary person thrust into extraordinary circumstances. Now duty bound to use his great power to fulfill his great responsibility. The footage shown seemed to achieve the same sweet spot tone and coming of age captured by Spider-Man Homecoming. Funny, but not irreverent. Fun, but not without stakes, and a big, big heart. Spider-Verse very well could prove to be Sony's own Black Panther, the Marvel Studios blockbuster that proved a worldwide phenomenon earlier this year with mostly cast of color. It remains to be seen if the super tune from directors Bob Parachetti, Peter Ramsey, and Ronnie Rothman can tap into that same zeitgeist, as unlikely to ever be repeated as it is. But the power of the Spider-Man brand and the appeal of a fresh, mixed-race hero could make Sony and Columbia Pictures almost prophetic with what should prove to be the family favorite hit of the Christmas season. It's time to get excited, Marvel and Spidey fans. This one's going to be out of this world, out of several worlds. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse swings into theaters December 14th. And all I have to say is that this movie is going to be insanely awesome. I'm loving every single thing that this movie is doing with the relationship between Peter and Miles and the way on how we're getting really awesome villains in this movie as well. Plus, along with the fact on how the movie is visually going to look is going to be the best part about this film. And everyone from the cast with Shamik Moore, Jake Johnson, and Liev Schreiber is super passionate about every character that is in this movie and I just can't wait to see their full performances in the film. And I don't know if that was officially confirmed before or not, but we actually have an official release date of the movie on December 14th, which is awesome. But anyways, guys, that's the crazy news bomb I have for you today for both Venom and Into the Spider-Verse. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. What do you think about all this news for Into the Spider-Verse, and what do you think about the Venom design not having the white spider? But I just can't wait for both these movies, and I think it's a great time to be a Spider-Man fan. But anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Stay spectacular, Spider fans, and stay vicious, Venom fans. Peace out. Oh, yes! Never jumped out of a movie car before!